Vielen Dank. Ah, vielen Dank. You know, it's always good to uh, come out here and show a world champion that you're also a champion. Uh, so now that I did that, I know he's gonna go back in the lab and start to conquer. The last time I beat him, he came out like a menace the next year. And then the next year he broke the world record. So I now have to go back in my lab as well and fix up some stuff. Did you expect to do so well in the world championship? Uh, yes, yes. Um, went into the world championship with a goal. Um, had a game plan, focus on that, and we did what we, we went to do. The up, ultimate mission was to get the gold, but we got a medal, or first medal, so I take that. This has been a big game for you with the silver and you know, the time lately here. I mean, have you done anything different from previous years? Like, what do you think uh, you should so good this year? Praise be to God. Praise be to God. That's what I did different. Curious, I mean, 47-27. You ran 47.26 earlier in the year, right? Like the consistency is off the charts, right? How have you kind of been remaining grounded mentally to be able to have that consistency? Uh, stay with God, mm -hmm. that's the first one. Uh, converse with my coaches, stay close to them. We talk over the worst plans, talk over what we need to do. And then three, I have my circle, family and friends, keep me well grounded, uh, make sure we stay within the realm of reality and not venture out too much. How do you feel about this specific race kind of technically compared to whether it's Worlds or you know, 47.26 that you did? Or... Uh, overall, I was good. I'm happy that I could have come back after Worlds and deliver such a superb um, competition, especially with what I put the body through mentally and physically from Worlds, which was like probably five days ago. So the fact that I could come out here, recuperate and go again, I'm happy with that result. And Zurich looks um, special to you. Um, you've beaten Carsten here before, um, even though he's also you've also lost to him. In, we'll talk us through the track. Is there something special about the track? Oh uh, man, I think I think honestly, if we have to be real with each other, I think it's an internal beef between all of us. Like I, I kid you not. Like even though we dabs each other, yeah. Though we we wish each other luck. In the back of our heads, we're like, bro, I want to catch you today. And we know once we're physically ready, it's a dog fight on any given day between all four of us, five of us, six of us. Um, so I think it's just the internal beef that is what was not has to be said, but is understood. You understand? And, and it's taken you five years to do it. Talk us through the journey to come back and be the best again. Um, well, for the last few years, I'm, mentally I wasn't there going through some stuff on and off the track, but this year, um, I surrounded myself with a group of individuals that just wanted the best for me and I wanted the best for them. Um, found, got closer with family, got closer with God, and I set out a plan and I stuck to it. Um, I stopped going out, I stopped late night partying. I just focused 110% on track and field. Like, track and field is my bread and butter. I dug deep into track and field till I was studying them. And then my coach actually said, yo, you gotta stop studying your competitors. Study yourself. Go out there and race, go out there and run. And that was probably one of my biggest downfalls. I could tell you where Benjamin faults is, Dos Santos faults is, Wahoom faults is, but I couldn't tell you my faults. And that was the biggest issue. I was focusing on them more than focusing on me. And I know the season, I mean, you've still got your gym to go, but do you think you've met your targets for the season yet? Uh, the target for the season is just to finish 110%, follow through with what coaches say, and finish the season healthy and prepare for next year.